tea? Coffee? That's what he said. Tea? Coffee? I know I'm new to the game, but recently I was turned on to an app called Etsy. And for those seven of you that don't know what Etsy is, it's basically an app that allows individuals or small businesses to make shit, homemade shit, and sell it online. It's a cool app. I'd heard about it a while ago, but never really looked at it that closely. Never really thought there would be anything out there that, well, that I would be interested in. Well, it all changed one day when I went looking for some earrings. I got both of my ears pierced. And when I go back to work this time, I'm going to wear them. And normally, because it's a corporate environment, I don't. But I don't really know why. There's no rule against it. Several dudes have them. So I decided this time I'm gonna do it. But I don't want just any earrings. I want some cool new earrings, right? So I find some Superman earrings, not on Etsy, but they're freaking sweet. I ordered those. And I already have a pair of fake diamond ones. But I wanted something else. I wanted something that said whiskey didn't actually say whiskey. So I type in whiskey earrings in Google and I find what looks like a whiskey glass. And it's a pair of earrings. And I find it on Etsy. Again, sweet as hell. Ordered those two. Nice. So I got two pair coming in, right? First pair comes in and it's a Superman ones, right? All metal. Looks like little diamonds in the picture, but it wasn't. It was still okay, though. Because these things were going to work. Okay. A few days later, however, the other pair of earrings show up. And that experience was not quite so good. And that was because the whiskey earrings that I ordered were cheap. They were big and they were cheap. And not just cheap in price, they looked cheap. And how do I know that? Well, because I have eyes, first of all. And because when I asked my youngest son, about whether or not he liked my new earrings, he said that they looked like not whiskey in a glass, but tea or coffee. Been over a year now that I've been a vegan. As you've heard me say before, I watched a documentary called What the Health? I was sickened by what I saw and made the switch that day to not eat meat or any other animal products from that day forward. And honestly, it's not been that bad. The hardest part has probably been just training myself to look at the label and see if there's any allergens on it. Because that's where it will usually tell me if I can eat it or not. It'll tell me if there's eggs in it or milk, and obviously a quick scan of the ingredients list will tell me if there's any meat. So that part has been different. It's taken some getting used to. But other than that, it's not been that bad. Because you see, there's a vegan substitute for almost every food out there. You need butter, there's vegan butter. You need milk, there's soy milk or coconut milk or almond milk. You need meat, well, there's almost meat out there. There's things like tofu and various other soy products that are manipulated to look like meat and behave like meat. But so far, nothing has been created that I've tasted, at least, that can compare to the taste and texture of meat. Chicken in a stir fry, hamburgers and steaks on a grill. Being a vegan, those are things that you have to come to terms with losing because as of today, there's just no good substitute out there. There's been a lot of attempts to dress up the tofu or drown it in sauce, and they're okay, tolerable, I can eat it. But it just doesn't compare. Because when I want steak, I want steak. If I want chicken, I want real chicken. If I want a hamburger, I'm used to it coming from a cow. Anything else, and it's just not the same. Anything else, and well, it's just fake. We have a very short list of things, chores, that myself, my wife, and my kids, and I have to do in our house. The seven of us, we have to split up the responsibilities or somebody ends up getting the shaft. Now, chores can range from anything like laundry to garbage, making the bed, or vacuuming the floor. Most of them don't take very long, but they're just a pain in the ass to do. Nobody likes them. 
including myself, and the chief of all the hated chores is dishes. Now, if you ask anyone, I don't know if they'd say that it's that they hate the dishes the most, but judging by how often people need to be reminded it's their day, I'd say it's the case. They're dirty, they're daily, and just when you think you're done, you're not. Somebody is always pulling shit from the recesses of their room and dumping it in the sink. We struggle with dishes in our house, and I am always looking for a solution. We've done schedules, we've tried paying just one person to do it, we tried just winging it and seeing if they get done, which has been by far the worst solution thus far, because everybody just tries to wait the other person out, and then whoever ends up doing them gets pissed and vows not to do them again until everybody starts helping. It's a mess. There has been one solution we haven't tried yet, at least not completely, and that is using paper plates and plastic utensils. Now, it's been suggested many times, both internally within the house, and my mom suggested it not too long ago, but for some reason we haven't tried it yet. Now, it's not because it's not a good idea. It may very well work. Why have we not done it? If the dishes are such a big deal in the house, and this could be a possible solution, why have we not tried it? Well, I thought about this, and I think it's because we like our dishes. We like our ceramic plates and saucers and bowls. We like our glasses and our reusable plastic cups. We like our sturdy metal utensils that never wear out and only have to get thrown out after some really bad fights with the garbage disposal. We like things that are nice to look at, things that are not gonna snap in half, things that we know are going to last. And with paper plates and plastic utensils, you're just never really sure. They're just not as reliable. They're imitations and they're cheap. Growing up, I just didn't go to church that much just wasn't part of our weekly routine. My parents both worked and worked hard during the week, and weekends were their time to recover. If I did go to church when I was little, it was with my grandma. Christmas, Easter, vacation Bible school, Christian camp, shit like that. She loved church, loved listening to the pastor speak, and loved the community of like-minded believers that surrounded her, especially in a small town. That's a big deal. So my grandma went to church all the time. Sundays, and during the week. She even liked watching the preachers on television, the Jim Bakers and Jimmy Swaggarts of the world. She gave a lot of money to those people, and her local church as well. She was on a fixed income, but that didn't matter. She gave what she wanted to give, and if she was short, she'd just go sell some more stuff at her garage sale. She loved the church. My grandpa, not so much. I don't ever remember him being inside the four walls of the church. He liked his beer, his whiskey, his curse words, and none of that shit was okay inside the church. I just don't think he ever felt like he belonged there. And I think the other thing was that he just didn't trust those people. You see, he knew a lot of those people just from living in the small town. And what he knew of them just didn't match up. He knew some of them outside the church, outside of Sunday that they had a hell of a mouth on them. He knew some of them weren't faithful to their spouses. He knew some of them, when they were by themselves, or thought nobody was looking, would sneak a little beverage in every now and then, or sometimes be completely shit-faced on a Saturday night, right there in that pew on a Sunday morning. You see, he didn't find them authentic. On Sunday morning, they would have their best face on, but the rest of the week, they were just being their old sinful selves. In other words, he found them to be fakes. There's a passage in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, that speaks to this very issue of looking like one thing on the outside, but being something very, very different on the inside. It says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also 
and will be clean. And he goes on to say, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. The church, both back then and today, is in a tough spot. On one hand, nobody wants to go to church and have somebody else dump all their problems on them. But we're also not supposed to go to church and act like we don't have any problems at all either oversharing or accused of being holier than thou, both inside of church and out. How are we supposed to act? Are we supposed to put on that good face? Are we supposed to unload our issues to people if they ask, even if they don't ask? I've struggled with this for a long time, having certain expectations thrust upon me because I went to church, because I was a new creation in Christ because I was supposed to put my old ways behind me and be this other person. And it just never felt right. Always felt like I was trying to live up to this image that everyone had of me. I could never really be my true self. And then came writing. I started writing screenplays about 12 years ago. I felt it was much easier to express myself there than it was any place else. I laughed at off-color comedies, and eventually got to the point where I'm like, I'm going to write something that is similar to the stuff that I laugh at. It was such a revelation and so freeing to finally say to the world, look, here's what makes me laugh. Finally, the outside matched the inside. Finally, I don't have to hide anymore. Finally, I can be myself. So for those of you out there that struggle with this, and I know there are plenty of you. I encourage you to find some way to express yourself so that more of the real you can be out here for the rest of us to appreciate. And honestly, if we don't appreciate it, who fucking cares? You were created uniquely and you should be able to express yourself uniquely regardless of who you're around or what you're doing. Stop feeling like you have to edit yourself just for the world to like you. It's exhausting. And nowadays, people can spot a fake a mile away, so you're not really fooling anybody anyway. We want to see the real you, not the plastic utensil you, not the paper plate you, not the fake meat you, or the cheap earring you, or the Sunday morning you. The real you. The Saturday night you. No more imposters. No more imitations. No more trying to be somebody that you're not. Just... Glasses up, to good friends, great nights, stiff drinks, and real conversations. I'll see you next time.